G'day guys, just before we get into this video, I've actually found something that um, that actually I didn't really like and that has, has actually shocked me and I'm actually pretty disappointed with. So I came across this stat um, in the channel customizations and um, I found this stat. Apparently 97% of you guys love my videos but you're not subscribed to my channel. So before we get, before you start watching this video, please subscribe to my channel, turn on the notifications button so you don't miss any videos uh, that are gonna be uploaded very soon or in the coming days. So if you do that, I will be internally grateful. Let's go on to the video. What is up guys and welcome back to a brand new video. This time around we are heading off for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix for the eighth episode of this career mode journey. But uh, yeah, just that little uh, detailed bit at the start where a, a lot of you guys are subscribed. Please subscribe to my channel if you are so enjoying this video and turn on the notifications button so you don't miss out on any more uh, video videos in the in the upcoming days ahead. So if you haven't missed the if you missed the last episode, uh, the link will always be uh, in the description below, or you can cl click in the top right hand corner um, of the screen. Uh, Monaco. First time I've ever done a sim damage race and turned out to be quite a bit of a success actually. So if you want to see that, go check it out uh, as we before we before you watch this video. So this weekend as a Bajan should should make my chances uh, not too high actually. <laughs> I don't even know why that was a bit dramatic. Uh, we're gonna check on the odd components for just just for practice before before qualifying because I really want to save some of the fresh uh, components for quality and the race because that's where it's uh, it'll matter matter the most. 1.55 mil to um uh, to spend. I think we're gonna do that on the personnel. Spend some of that on the personnel. Improve second driver's experience stats. But no, we did the fitness center, which was I have absolutely no idea. But uh, it does more. Uh, um, well, it focuses more on your focus and a couple of other areas uh, uh, rather than um, experience. So, and apparently, as we go to have a personnel event, Oscar has had a bit of an accident at the gym. Uh, we, now, we do have the option to investigate or to continue as it is. If we did to, if we did investigate, it would uh, Oscar's focus wouldn't be or would drop a little bit. So, I think it's important. For to, to keep his focus up because from what I've seen um, in others uh, others career modes uh, the driver's focus doesn't really seem to be that good and some some of the other uh, youtubers are performing better uh, even though when they when they're in a, a lower place car and they um, they perform better than um, some of the midfield teams even though they might be the second or the second, third, or even the worst car in the field, so they could be like fighting for fringe points or whatever in what could be literally the worst car uh, that they may have. So I think it's important to keep Oscar's focus up as much as possible because come, because come uh, towards uh, where we get our car upgraded, that can be uh, pretty pretty vital. One YouTuber in particular that I've seen, he stopped all upgrades. He had Piastri in his team. He stopped all upgrades and come contract negotiations. He wanted to re-sign him, but he rejected. So I definitely don't want to go down that path. But uh, we'll talk about that later. Let's move on to qualifying. So here we go there for qualify for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. I must say during practice, the the, the setup that I um that I uploaded uh, originally in the time trial felt pretty shit to be honest. Uh, it, it, it wasn't it was just didn't feel that great, especially through some of the the medium speed corners or or even some of the 90 degree corners. The steering just didn't it just steering, I just feel like I had to, had to oversteer the car a little bit. Um, uh, the car section wasn't actually too bad. But in some in some places, yeah, I just had to turn the wheel a little bit more, which means I, meant that I was um I was leaning on the tires a little bit, especially uh, coming up towards turn 15. If we well, if we eventually get a chance to see, 
Uh, the car, yeah, the, I mean, I, f I feel like I've struggled at turn 15 all weekend, or, or even up to this point. So after qualify, I did go to time trial and find another setup. Uh, we'll, we'll get, to, we'll see what that's uh, like uh, in a bit. But uh, yeah, I, I just struggled to get around turn 15 all up to all weekend, even up to even up to qualify. So we're letting some of the uh, cars that are already on their lap. We've got 40 seconds to go. We should be able to get to the line in time to start our final flying lap and maybe, just maybe, get a bit of slipstream off of. The Aston Martin, I think that was Stroll or Vettel that uh, we got a slipstream of. Um, so I'm just trying to break a little bit earlier, trying to get the car turn in. We, as you can see, we missed the apex a little bit at uh, turn two and on the run to um, towards turn three and coming going through the middle sector. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it feels better than than our pre our previous lap, as in like how the car is handling definitely um, got that entry and exit exit right uh, through the castle section once again try to get the car up as far as, on, as to the outside as much as possible so we can get a nice flowing run out of turn 12 I think that is at the exit of the castle section but uh, coming up towards the um, uh, this this here turn 15 the, the, the car just wouldn't really handle Handle well in some in some stages, but it, it looks like it handled pretty well at that stage. At that stage, yeah. At a turn 16, short shift up to fifth gear and on the run. But yeah, we're not finding the time that what we really want. And we've crashed. We've crashed at turn 50. Uh, not turn 50. Turn the exit of turn 18. I think that is or 19. And we've had a monster crash. Uh, surprisingly, we didn't even roll over. But yeah, the, uh, that was a pretty narrow. I took that corner actually pretty narrow. We get another replay. So as you can see, I, I felt like I turned it a little bit narrow. I'm just trying to not oversteer the car too much because if you do that, it takes all the momentum out of out of the car. And on a long straight, that that's probably the worst spot you can literally oversteer the car and lose all lose all your momentum. So I really wanted to avoid that, but in doing so. We were not out anyway. We weren't going to improve by much anyway. I don't think we would have um, we would have found much more time, or maybe even gained any more spots. Uh, so Piastri, I was I just wanted to look at Piastri times. He was just up on his time in the first sector. He lost, I think, about three tenths or two or two and a bit tenths in the second sector, and he gained all of that back on the last sector. So. He must have made a mistake somewhere in the se in the second sector, and then gained it all back somehow. Uh, yeah, so a bit of a disaster for both of us. Hopefully, we can find something miraculous in the in the 26 laps that are ahead of us. A warm welcome to you all at home for today's Azerbaijan Grand Prix, a race that in its short history has already proven no stranger to drama, and where a fourth row start is just about as likely to give you a podium as pole position, with Lance Stroll and Sergio Perez finishing third from there in 2017 and 2018 respectively. The Baku city circuit measures roughly six kilometers and it's made up of 20 corners and two DRS zones. The circuit winds around the narrow city, through the old town and even brushes against the city's medieval walls. However, as beautiful as the setting is, this track is also a ferocious technical challenge where the smallest of mistakes could lead to a catastrophic consequence for any one of our drivers. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks like for today's race. Charles Leclerc lines up on pole position and a very happy Carlos Sainz will start second. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Perez. Russell and Sir Lewis Hamilton and Norris. Ricardo, Fernando Alonso, Gasly and Yuki Tsunoda. Vettel, Magnussen, Valtteri Bottas and Verstappen. They've taken a grid penalty. Stroll, Albon, Guan Yu Zhou and Mick Schumacher. Ocon, Latifi, Skip and Oscar Piastri. After the points finished last race, let's aim to keep that momentum going. Thank you, Mark. I don't think we'll be 
getting points today. Uh, it's going to have to take a miracle and, and a few DNFs to do so. Maybe a safety card to, to even, for even that to happen. But uh, we'll see what happens. Simple strategy, mediums to hard. Softs, are not, softs don't really last too much uh, around here. Well, this place is very harsh on the rears. Uh, yeah, because you're, you're breaking for the corners uh, a fair bit, and yeah, it's all, and back is always been harsh on the rears. We'll see how we look after them today as we get ready. Five red lights, and we are racing it in Baku. Looks like a good start up against Latifi. He might be one of our closest rivals today. Good start for Moscow as well. He's already up the inside of Latifi and the house of Mick Schumacher and Ocon. He can't quite get them both. Is the door open? Uh, Schumacher goes defensive. I think Oscar was thinking about a move on him, but uh, his momentum was killed. And we get up to P20. Up two spots after two turns. Uh, not using too much of our battery. Heading up towards turn three. Nice and cautious. I don't want to be doing anything stupid, especially on a street circuit, mind you. Uh, side by side with Oscar, Schumacher and Ocon side by side with each other. They've killed their momentum, but uh, there's no avenue for us to get up the inside. If we can get a good exit here, we should be able to have a look on the inside of Ocon as we go up towards turn 10, I think. No, 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 turn 7 or 8 or, or whatever. And we've nearly re-ended Ocon, so that gives Oscar a free run at us, but this is not a spot to go side by side, and thankfully... Oscar decides to back out of that, but you can see the understeer in our car at the moment. That, that's really, that's really almost killed our momentum, and that has let, you know, Ocon off the hook. Oscar has a look up the inside at turn 16. I was thinking about letting him go to see what his pace was like, but uh, we've actually made a nice switchback work. But now Oscar is vulnerable to Latifi. They're still side by side as they go through 17 and 18, or 18 and 19, because that's the little bend there is turn 20, which is apparently the last turn. And now they're still side by side on the run to the main show. It looks like Oscar's got a bit more of a slipstream behind, behind us, but look at Latifi. Uh, the, sh the straight line speed of that wheel is, is meant to be a little bit slippery as it has been uh, in real life, at least what Albon has shown in real life. They're still side by side coming out of turn one and all this squabbling is allowing me to get away and so I can focus more on on Ocon and Schumacher ahead of us. And they're still side by side. How are they still side by side even though DOS isn't even, isn't even available yet? But I think Latifi should be able to get it done unless Oscar could still hang around the outside. How's he going around the outside for three straight corners? He's got the inside for turn four. I think there's a little bit of contact there um, at turn four. But in the end, Latifi does manage to get the place. Well done, Oscar, for going around the outside on three straight corners. Not easy to do. Um, any professional racing driver would have just backed out of that. But he's done. He did really well to to, to stay to stay around the outside for that that long. So if Oscar can keep showing that showing that he can, you know, fight his opponents, then I reckon he's got a long future with the team. And as, as unless we can. Uh, something dramatic happens and he can't really perform as well then ho then hopefully we can give him a car and we can get ourselves a car that can get us towards the upper midfield or the lower midfield teams uh, but essentially uh, I think for the next few rounds I think our aim is to almost be best of the rest uh, lap 4 we got our first dose of DRS we were sort of struggling to keep touch with the cars in front, it, that Alpine is supposed to be a little bit further up, uh, up the order than us. But I think Ocon had grip penalties. I can't quite remember what um, what he had. On board now with Max Verstappen. He started uh, outside the top ten because of grip penalties. I do remember that. He goes around the outside of Sonoda at turn one. Uh, I think he's got a bit a bit more of a flowing run than Sonoda, and he gets the move done around the outside at turn one. Verstappen really needs to start stringing some results together because the Ferraris are already starting to string away in the championship and looks like, according to the minimum, it looks like they're 1-2 with Perez in third. So that the Ferrari this season has literally been so strong compared to what we've seen them in real life. So with the um, with all the um, all the, the nerfing of the team's performances and whatnot, I think... Uh, 
things should almost be back to normal. As we saw the Stappen going around the outside of, of one of the Aston Martins there at, um, at turn four. So Verstappen really needs to start making more moves if he's going to get anywhere near up the order. Uh, tire wear update. Uh, yeah, as, as I said, the rears are, a little, a little, are very harsh around here. Uh, 32 on the left, 34 on the right. Uh, that, that's for the rears. Uh, I'm just trying to work the front a little bit more, but, in, but I'm not sure if that's a good idea because that's going to just kill our momentum uh, everywhere we go. Verstappen goes around the outside again on... What's that, Mick Schumacher or Kevin Magnussen? It's a has of some sort. And they're, they're going up the inside of Max at turn three, but that, that might have killed their momentum. It's Kevin Magnussen that we're on board with. Verstappen doesn't get DRS. Magnussen does. He goes around the outside of oh, Verstappen into turn three. Verstappen's still there. Verstappen really needs to clear the has very quickly if he's going to have any chance of getting distant points, and it doesn't look like he's done so. Uh, back to our battle. Al Albon and Ocon having a nice little squabble there. If these two can squabble, it might invite us into the party. But if we get held up by these two any longer, we might have to start thinking about an alternative strategy. We're, I think we're a couple of laps out from our pit window. Uh, didn't want to think about a risky dive bomb on, on Albon anyway. So I, I'm, I'm like, you know what? Let's come into the end of this lap and see if we can pull an undercut on these guys if we can pull up an undercut i've got i've got a feeling that and we've got the i've got a feel feeling that we may have the confidence to really defend even on one or two lap uh older tires than the rest of us this is a big gamble early on uh but if, if we can get our tires up to temperature quickly enough we can hopefully gain some advantage back from the others and so the first few corners are going to feel pretty rubbish but if we, as long as we can get our tires up to temperature pretty quickly we should be half a chance or maybe get in front of Albon and or, Albon or Ocon or both of them uh, as we can see others are now start, starting to come into the pits I think a lot of them are going on to hards I think Verstappen went on to hards Gasly on hards I think that's Bottas that's gone on to hards so it looks like everyone is on a one-stop strategy for what I know of, at, at the very least, anyway. And that's, uh, is that Albon or Latifi? It's Albon that's um, come out of the pits. And there we are, coming out of turn one. Where is Albon? I think he's just a little too far back. So it looks like Albon responded the lap after us. So that's a little bit unfortunate there. Even though his tyres are going to be a little bit cold, I think they'll be able to come into temperature as, the, as they get to the castle section. This is Verstappen. Uh, trying to go around the outside of Piastri and he's hit the wall. Very light commentary there, but I think Verstappen has hit the wall and he looks like he's got some front wing damage. Yes, he has. So he might be back into the pits he is to change that front wing as we see Oscar into the pits as well. So Piastri should be able to get in front of Verstappen here because I don't think he's got any front wing damage to speak of. There go on go the hard tyres. What's Verstappen? Hit it on to. Uh, we'll see what he's got on to uh, in a bit. Uh, meantime, back to our, our battle. That was while Oscar was making his top. Ocon's come out directly ahead of us. We should be able to get a good run out of turn th two. And, and with a bit of DRS, DRS and using a bit of our battery, we should be able to fly past um, Esteban Ocon, we're going to go around the outside at turn one. We've got a bit more momentum and a bit more grip and a bit more warmth in our tyres. And we do get the move done up into 18th place. This might be the best uh, we can do with Albon on fresher tyres. He should be able to skip away from us. We've hit the wall again at turn 19. But thankfully, and very thankfully, no damage from what the MFD says. And no, no damage from... The front of the nose, from what we can see. So now everyone's made their stop. Looks like Charles Leclerc is still leading this race from his teammate Saints and Checo Perez there in third. He's pretty much going to be scoring Red Bull's points this season if Verstappen can't get that car up where it probably should be by now. Uh, even though it looks like Red Bull are closing the distance to, to Ferrari in the performance index. I really think Verstappen should start to 
be performing a little bit better if I do say so myself. But, uh, well, we've scratched the wall again at turn four. Thankfully, no damage from, from what we know. Uh, so, even though this is a long lap, uh, we've actually flown past this race pretty quickly. Uh, I'm not so sure how quickly we can get to the end of the race because no matter what we do, Ocon is going to get DRS regardless of uh, regardless of what happens uh, at this point. As we start lap 18 and heading into turn one, if we could just get a clean gap uh, from Ocon as the sapens into the pits again, I didn't see a white stripe tire on there, because, but probably because he's used his mediums. Uh, on that stint, he would have he would have started on mediums uh, at the start of the race, and uh, looks like he's got a few sets of soft tires remaining. Ocon has to think about a move into turn turn three, and I, we do give him enough racing room. But uh, well, he stuck the nose in there. Let's have a look at a replay. Oh, I tell you what, he's pretty narrow, and he hit the wall on the inside. He was pretty narrow. I did see, and he was well, he was nowhere near up the inside. But I did, did try to leave him a little bit of space. But I think, um, you know, I, I think that was a bit of a clumsy move. He wasn't really that close enough, you know. Honestly, and he just outbraked himself. And his line into turn three was pretty narrow. Yellow flag up ahead, and that is for Guan Yu Zhou, who is apparently out of the race. So Joe's got a problem of some sort that's forced him to retire the car. We'll get a replay up uh, in just a second to see what has happened. Here he is, he's making his way up towards the castle section and it looks like he's got himself a problem. Yep, there's the smoke coming out of the back. Uh, I think that stroll he's holding up, that's going to hold up the pack and I'm pretty sure the car in front was Valtteri Bottas. So there's uh, Stroll, Schumacher and Albon. So that's brought Albon into the party uh, in terms of that battle a little bit, but that's allowed uh, Bottas, his teammate, skip away from those guys because I think those two or those three cars might have been catching him so so Joe even though that DNF won't do him any favors it's done it's done his teammate a favor and gave him some breathing space but but even that has brought uh, Mick into having a move on Lance Stroll into turn number one they're still side by side if those if these two take each other at Albon will say thank you very very much it's not gonna these guys are not even fighting for points here at the moment. But uh, I tell you what, it's going to give them beautiful, awesome racing. Neither of them got DRS except for Albon. But Albon, he doesn't go for the three, the miracle three wide move. How does neither neither Stroll or Schumacher get DRS? How, how does that make sense? I guess they might have been dead even at the, at the, um, the detection line. But in the end, Schumacher does get in front of the Aston and Albon... He had no path to get in front of those guys, honestly. Uh, even if he would have gone for the miracle three-wide move. Uh, anyway, anyway, five laps to go. Next time by onto the straight. And uh, uh, this time, Ocon is far enough up the inside. We give him space, but I think he's hit the wall again into turn three. So here's, here's, a, uh, here's a couple of replays. He was definitely significantly up the inside more than what he was, but surely this time he's got some front wing damage. He does. He does have some front wing damage. And I think we've got a bit of damage ourselves. Here's a, a bit of a slow-mo uh, angle. But it looks like he's he's turning too narrow again, uh, just, just like the last one. I'm pretty sure we definitely did enough to give him enough racing room. But, you know, I think he's just overcommitted and maybe you know maybe broken broken a little bit too early or too hard and it, that's why he's had to run a little bit now to avoid taking us out but in doing so he's uh, scuffed a little bit of his front wing and yeah that's all over red rover meantime verstappen getting up the inside of Piastri and Verstappen with DRS open and Piastri not even with his rear wing open was significantly alongside for nearly all of that straight into turn from turns two to three. So the straight line speed of our car, or of, of, of Oscar's car at the very least, seems to be pretty decent. If only he can use that to, to catch up to us at the moment. He's a fair way behind 
Uh, Latifi, what would you say that gap is at the moment? That's got to be nearly 10 seconds that Oscar is behind Latifi at the moment. So, four laps to go now. Uh, we can't, there's no chance we can catch the guys in front, so our best hope is to just keep Ocon at bay, which we've done a sensational job so far. Uh, even though Ocon is what on, what would you say? Or what, two lap fresher tyres? Then us at the moment. Verstappen's into the pit lane again. So, he's using whatever soft tyres he has available at the moment. He must not... Why? Surely those hards would be... I mean, it's a scrub set of hards. I mean, he has used them. But surely he can... He should have He should have pitted them for the second tyre. They would have been, what, 4 or 5% at the very least? Uh, but yeah, surely... If that was me, I would have definitely gone to the hards um, so yeah, I'm surprised he hasn't even gone to that and he's gone three set of soft tyres he would have been he would have been in front of us maybe even close to the next three cars in front of us but anyway here's a battle here's the battle for the lead Leclerc and Sainz these two have been fighting all the way and this is the run up to the checkered flag Sainz with the DRS open can he get close enough to overtake his teammate I don't think he is and Leclerc takes out the Azerbaijan Grand Prix and ends Saints' four race winning streak of races from Imola all the way up to uh, Monaco. Well, if you really want to count Spain, <laughs> how many times am I going to say Spain? Because we 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 know that Leclerc won, but well, you get the full story anyway. Uh, well, here's our run up to the line now. Just get, need to get through turn 15 cleanly, which we have. And if we can get a clear run out of 16, up into 5th gear. No, 4th gear. Now into 5th gear. And just short, uh, just shift up the gears and get through 18 and 19 cleanly. We have. But Ocon, he is going to be right up us. Uh, up to the line. Can we do a little bit of weaving? It's a video game, so why not? And up to the line. I think we should be able to hold off on Ocon. First 17th place. We've hit the wall. Up to the line. Oh, my goodness me. How did we not crash out? And that's the end of the race. We'll see you in part further, mate. How did we not crash out of that? I thought we were guaranteed to DNF out of that. That was a significant hit. And this is Oscar's run up to the line. Verstappen is going to finish dead last out of any, out of everyone. And Oscar is going to finish ahead of the world champion. So I think that's, what, 21st for Oscar. And he gets driver of the day. No, 20th for Oscar. Wow. And so ends another Azerbaijan Grand Prix. A fascinating race and a well-deserved victory. What do you think it was today, Ant, that gave them the edge over the competition? I think that smart tyre management on track and very smooth driving definitely assisted in their victory today. That combination meant they got the absolute maximum out of their tyres at all times. And here we are, a team that is no stranger to the podium, taking their place on top once again. A sublime race today and a stunning win for Ferrari. I am still very surprised how we didn't even crash out at the very last gasp or at the very death of that race. That's probably the luckiest moment I've ever had in my life to even finish a race at the moment. Well, it wasn't a lucky finish for Ferrari. Well, it is for Leclerc if you think about it, fending off his teammate who, if he had another lap with, with DRS on the front straight, he would have been closer to nabbing him, I'd, I'd say. So, it was 20th for Oscar, and he gets driver of the day. We gained four spots, and we don't get driver of the day. Wow. Anyway, so, what was the... So, it was a mechanical failure for, for Joe, and he got a corner cut on the same lap. If you go back and look at the footage, I think I know where he cut the corner. So everyone did a one stop, medium to hard, but Verstappen used three sets of softs available uh, that was left available for him. Now at this point, I wasn't quite sure why Verstappen pitted, but when I eventually looked back at the replays, it then clicked into my mind and it made more sense of what happened now. Well, we fall out of the top 15 in the championship, but there's still a long way to go. There's still what? 
14 races still available or still still to run 13 14 races to go and this is only the eighth race so there's still a long way to go and to still develop our car at, at the well we we can still get this car to where it needs to be but it's not going to be this season it, we can probably get this car towards the top maybe seasons two or three uh, at the mo at the moment I do really do want to complete at least three seasons of career mode and maybe by that point we'll be fighting for the world championship I really hope we get to that point but uh, we're gonna need to consistently do videos without any dramas if we're gonna get to the very top of Formula One and hopefully some less drama within the team if you guys know what I mean but anyway thank you guys so much for watching this video I know it's been a long video uh, I'm trying to keep these videos as short as possible but when you've got this much action involved in a race it's really hard to keep it short trust me it really is but thank you for watching this video please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already uh, it would be uh, very very good if you can subscribe and click the notifications bell if you do you won't be missing a single thing if, if you want to see different kind of content on this channel uh, let me know in the comments below if you really want to see something different other than career mode I do have some other thoughts uh, in my mind that uh, that I could probably do uh, if you, it, but if you guys have something else in mind please let me know in the comments so I can ob ob observe and maybe think about those you know those ideas and then I might be able to do them so thank you for watching until the next one for the Canadian Grand Prix I'll catch you next time